That is our setting for this morning's action. Estadio Malvinas, Argentina. In the city of Mendoza, Argentina. The west of the country, just across from the capital of Chile, Santiago. Great to have you with us on Stan Sport. As well, he's get set for battle against a resurgent Argentinian outfit. We're coming off the back of a series win against Scotland under the new guidance of a familiar face in the form of Michael Checker, Sean Maloney, Andrew Mertens and Morgan Turinui in commentary. Morgs conditions A1 as James Slipper takes the captain's armband for the afternoon. Yes, James Slipper steps into the breach for this Wallaby team and you see there <laughs> the serious nature of this contest. The 80 minutes of effort to come, the expectation of both teams as they wait to enter Andrew Mertens. What an exciting opportunity for both teams. Yes, it is. Buenos dias, guys. Two front row captains going head to head today. Julian Montoya, of course, from Argentina. It'll be a massive afternoon of scrummaging and set piece in general where you think Darcy Swain and Matt Phillip Locking for the Australians will fancy themselves to pinch a little bit of ball. Montoya back in as captain, back in the starting team, in charge of a forward pack that have so much responsibility. What a moment for Yamba products. Jed Holloway, a mature player, makes his test debut today. And in captaincy, as we mentioned, Mertz, James Slipper steps in, the hugely experienced loose head prop. Yes, not what it looked like at the start of the week. Obviously, we've discussed a lot. Michael Hooper looking after himself, and that gives a great opportunity for Fraser McWright as well to convert that excellent super rugby form to the international arena. Well, Los Pumas won't get a better opportunity to snap their run of outs in the rugby championship. They've lost their last eight on the spin. But this afternoon, in front of a vocal regional crowd. They look set to do all sorts of damage. Quay Cooper has never lost against Argentina. He's running in an 8-0 record. He's up against the might of Creevy and Montoya for Los Pumas. As touched on by both Andrew Mertens and Morgan Turinui, it's been Crazy last 24 hours for the Wallabies with incumbent captain Michael Hooper returning to Australia for personal reasons. So in his absence, it's James Slipper, the man. He'll step up with a C next to his name. Mike Adamson, the man in charge. This. Game two. The 2022 Rugby Championship. On the hand of the talent of Lucy, Santiago Canales. As referee Adamson gets the nod. Okay. Okay, stay behind. And it is go time in Argentina. And Carreras goes deep with the kickoff down to Icky Tau, put down by Gonzalez Samso. White. Working it away with Philip. The tail of this one. Holloway doing the carry. Okay, use it. 29 year old no. on debut getting his first touch of the afternoon. White. Charge down, it spits out the side. Cooper's there, Cooper shaping the kick and now it sends away an awful pass. And it's big hustle from Kramer who forces the error. Yeah, no, I was right in the back foot. I was right in the back foot. But... Well, Wallabies aren't happy with a few of the things there. Cooper thought the tackle was illegal under pressure. He didn't know whether to kick or not. And White felt that the charge down must have been offside because he had the long rough form. Great pressure from Argentina, exactly the way they want to start. Here's the pressure and charge down from Lavanini straight away. And Cooper thinks about kicking, 
goes into contact, tries to flick it away to Wikitao underneath his posts. Big D there from Kramer, who led his team to tackles, made in their recent series win against Scotland. He knows how to hit the ball with Cooper on that occasion. Half break is OK, but we need space. We need space. Sure, both packs, and certainly the crowd will be excited about the chance to get the first scrum underway so early. Not what the Australians wanted, perhaps. I was about to say what a good start it was. A good first touch from Icky Tower. A good shoulder on from Jed Holloway with his first carry as well. Good to get him into the game early, but Crouch. just behind the ruck there, Five. falling to pieces a little bit. Set. Matera picks and goes to the back. Matera caught by McWright and White. Great work for McWright to rip it back, and here we go. The Wallabies force the turnover, and Fraser McWright puts his hand up and says... I'll be here all afternoon with the steal. So he got off quick and it was Quade Cooper yeah, up high too, combining to rip the ball out. Great charge from Matera. You know that Michael Checker said to his team, go into the Cooper Channel early defence and attack. And Quade and McWright combining to rip that ball away and needed to. Great comeback from Quade Cooper. Underneath his sticks once again, coming up with a play for his team. But Michael Checker would have said, when Cooper's got the ball, we get a piece of him. And when we have the ball, we go into that channel. Not an easy one here for Nick White. He wants to get it to that right-hand side of the scrum, but those posts are providing something of an obstruction. Valentini popping away for White. White will do the kicking. Makes good contact as well. Oh, that is a rocket from Nick White. And the Wallabies are up over halfway. Excellent game management there this time from the Wallabies. Minimal phases in their own 22. They know exiting efficiently is a huge part of this test match as it is with all. They needed a bit of a breather after the start where they spent the bulk of the match in their own 22. Stop. James. Stay in your mind. Yeah, I'll stop them. You get your balls on. Aki. 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 Montoya with his first throw of the afternoon. He finds Alamano. Now the penalty for Los Pumas. Crossing onto the lifter. The Australian line out went pretty well against England. And like I said before, they'll be fancying themselves to pinch a couple. Guido Petty missing from the Argentinian line out. He is their main man. That's not to say that. Alemano and Labanini are slouches at all. Especially Mertz with Holloway there, a genuine option, a, dr a great challenger in the air, very good at stealing line-outs for the Waratahs this season. Just gives them so much tactical adaptability in both attack and defence at line-out time. Just a technical penalty there, jumping well, got, across the line on top of the lifter. He got lifted there, Morgs, by Swain and Phillip. So the two locks going into lifting, that just gives them that extra height, getting Jed Holloway up in the air. Carreras punches this one down towards the Wallabies 22 and Argentina pops straight back onto attack. See you at the front. There's your mark. Get the boys in line. Yeah. Montoya. Good throw again for Gonzalez Samso. Now the set piece play takes Los Pumas six from the line. Nice and quick from Kubeli. Got it to Orlando. Tackle. Orlando, strong post contact. Kubeli away here for Gonzalez Samso again. Kubeli swinging back short side. Carreras for Matera. Try Argentina. What a start from the men in blue and white. And I think they'll be lucky that they played so many phases because there was undoubtedly a forward pass off that line-out move. 
But no matter, they controlled the ball after that. You might see it here as they wheel round the back. That was Ford. They played another couple of phases and Chris passing at the end and a great line from Pablo Matera. Well, the aerial shot showed there's a cavalry charge of Fords and then a little bit of guile and Matera. No one stopping him there in space and they capitalise on the territory they've had in the first period of this game. Well, Feli, who was the series deciding try scorer late against Scotland in game three, whips over the conversion and it is 7-0, 7, -nil, seven gone. Well, they are not mucking around Argentina as we just see the final phase. The dummy runner and Pablo Matera, that close to the line with that much steam on, you're not going to stop them. But they went very quickly in the line out Argentina and the conversion. Comes the try score Matera. So good with the Crusaders in there. Super Rugby Pacific title winning run this year, Matera. And Argentina will exit their 22 just. The chance now for Australia to counter. Much was made of the idea of a fast start for the Wallabies, especially in their third test against England. It's not just about playing fast and getting there, it's this into the game. Valentini Vantage. with his first front foot Vantage. carry. And there's Kelly Vantage here for Vantage. Australia as well as Ikitao takes it on. White bouncing out, switching play here for Bobby V. Valentini towards the upright tee heads. Cooper goes out the back, finds the turf, and will head back for the penalty. Yeah. Look at the opportunity to respond on the scoreboard straight away here. The Wallabies. But immediately we see how they want to play. They want to play hard and flat at the line with strike players. But also, something Matt Tomua mentioned in the Stan Sport pre-show was attacking around the ruck, off nine, hard runners back against the grain. There, was, there, were, there were issues defensively for Argentina against Scotland in and around the ruck because of the line speed they're trying to get with Michael Checker as head coach and David Kidwell as the new defence coach. The switch pass back into Rob Valentini shows the Wallabies have identified that and will look to try and challenge the first and second defenders of this Argentinian team, and it could well result in points straight away. Blake Cooper, who was so impressive for the Wallabies throughout the rugby championship last year. Looking to chip over his first shot on goal and does so. It makes it 7 3. Down towards Philip. Philip will take. Ripped away though, cleverly by Gonzalez Samso. And now with Gomez Cordola. Penalty Argentina. So again, as was the case through their series against England, Australia struggling. Morgs with their restarts after putting points on the board. It's such a basic and, and often practised part that, of the game, accepting restarts, getting your system right, getting your structure right to efficiently and quickly exit. Nice lift and take here, and yeah, just Philip just gets I'll, I'll his pocket picked yeah, straight away by Gonzalez. Because there's no more form than that immediate uh, take, he can come around and challenge their great knowledge of the law. And then another technical one, you're not allowed to make a tackle when on the ground. You're out of the game in rugby if you are not on your feet. Ideally, anyway, Mertz. It was almost like Matt Phillip, they did that too well. He got so high in the air that he ended up taking the, the catch in the bread basket rather than having to reach up for it. And I think that was what gave Gonzalez the opportunity to pull for it. No 
agrees for either of the kickers to contend with this afternoon at the Estadio Malvinas, Argentina, usually used as a soccer field, was purpose built back in 1978 for the Soccer World Cup and now stands as host for Argentina's first hit out in the rugby championship. In comes Buffelli and the strike is pure from the winger. It's 10-3. Well, you mentioned the stadium, Sean. Does it have a moat? That's the great, the great part of Argentinian and South American stadiums I love is the moat separating the spectators from being able to jump across onto the field. Nick White again going deep with his restart. Valentini flooding in and trying to get a hand on Kubeli. Punch forward by Crema. Kubeli. Holding it up there for Gomez Cordella. You're over the break now. Philip putting some pressure on here, and that in turn results in a fluff kick taken well by Cooper. White whips it in behind. White giving chase, and Argentina will banana this one to touch. Oh, that is a wonderful touch finder down this right hand side. That's extraordinary. Under reasonable pressure too at the back. Caradas, he's got that away. That's with no angle. That's phenomenal. Van Gaa to Swain. McWright distributing for White. Valentini. He's been prominent early on. McWright gets the clean out wrong. Side entry. Side entry is the call. And the penalty goes to the home team. Just put the ball down once the penalty's been given. Well, here I go on my rant about the rucks these days, but Number that seven. wouldn't be necessary if we up. crack down on players up. like Kramer. Watch him in there. He's not going for the ball. He's just wrapping up Rob Valentini, the tackle player on the ground. It's an absolute blight the way rucks, not even being called rucks these days, are being officiated, and we need to sort it out. But anyway, if that's how these things are being refereed, then good play to them. Just stay there. Say again? Yeah. See? It was more the side entry from seven. Space. Well, they've been crisp with their set piece, Argentina. Kubeli. Sending it wide, we've got another penalty advantage here for Argentina. Advantage. Australia offside. Kubeli with a clever pick and roll. No, Sami can't hang on, and the coming back centre field, not far from the Same post for yet another Los Pumas penalty. Shot goal. Well, it's a really simple team chat for James Slipper right now, and I'm sure the message is coming down from yeah. on high from the coaches. Discipline for the Wallabies can't afford to piggyback Argentina into their own zone and. At the moment, it isn't taking too much from an impressive Argentina who are playing very simple and direct with numbers at the line and options nice and flat. If the Wallabies keep infringing, most they can keep accruing points by three. Yeah, both teams are trying to speed up the play. Obviously, Australia's going to be backing their fitness and Argentina, the boiling Latin blood. Buffelli whips over another three, and the margin is 10. He's built a reputation of being quite severe early on, Mike Adamson, and, and fierce. And that's not a bad thing to really establish clear boundaries for the players through the rest of the 80 minutes. Argentina really throwing it at the Australians at the moment. White. Plenty of hang time on this one, but it's taken well by... Alamano, Swain in there, trying to rip and tear. Comes back for a second go to Swain and helps to force an Australian penalty. 
Do you want to go again, Mertz? Oh, you've broken away at the front, <laughs> isolated. I better not, on. my lawyer's been messaging me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be triple time at this time of the morning. Oh, look, I think what happens there, as soon as that mall collapses, referees are just allowing players around just to try and kill the ball. It's a reward, really, for the industry and effort of Darcy Swain there, just making a pest of himself and breaking apart that mall. And once again, a team after scoring is allowing the opposition straight back into the game. Here's the man that's going to score the try. About to throw it in. If he can get it straight, it's all on. Van Gaar. No issues with the direction of the throw. Now he sets up the tail of the mall. Well countered by Argentina, though. Penalty advantage here for the Wallabies as White comes away for Paisami. Out the back for Cooper. Cooper holding up for Iki Tau Pataya. Pataya's there. In from the far wing, and Jordi goes over. Great piece of play with a real first opportunity for the Wallaby back line. It's good defence. Darcy Swain is a lifter a on the, the, legs on the Wallaby's the left-hand side. He draws that penalty by just jamming in as a lifter, and then under the freedom of penalty advantage, the Wallabies go out the back of their centre the pairing. The and Bataille adding the extra number off the blind wing is good enough to get over. Yeah, the initial drive from the Wallabies, making the Pumas all stay close, particularly the back rowers. Matera Gonzalez were standing really close, couldn't get out and help the backs out wider. And the pace of Pattaya, the timing of the pass from Quade Cooper, exquisite. Is this a water break, is it, Damien? Yeah. Quaid's first Perfect. shot at the poles yeah. was no, an absolute gimme from in front. Now looking to add the conversion after his sparkling work in the lead-up. <laughs> Cooper. No problems. 13-10. We're going at better than a point a minute, Morgs. Yeah, the efficiency of both teams in the attacking 22 has been excellent. One thing for people that are interested in the tactical adaptability of the Wallabies to keep an eye on is that Jordan Pattai here playing as a classic right wing with the 14 jersey on and Tom Wright outside him at 15. Keep an eye on them switching roles and chopping and changing throughout the game, spending time on wing and fullback intermittently. Groin better. Yeah, a good tackle there by Gonzalo Samsot. He's onside. White. Looking to touch and finding it just past the 22. So there's an exit for them. After Jordi Pataya's try. Certainly the better than the last one. Maybe not as far out as they would have liked. Good pressure on Marika Kuroimbete. We don't see this very often. Gonzalez, a little bit of a rag doll there, and he really got the Wallabies under pressure. They cleared, but not very far. Stay in the middle. Stop. Hooker, stay in the middle. Middle. Stay. Montoya, all the way putting pressure on. It's a good throw and take, though, by Argentina, and they bring Kramer in as a battering ram. Good work over the ball from Australia, but they get picked for not releasing. Number 10, They're a bit unlucky there. Rob Valentini, I think if it's Rob Valentini alone, he gets the penalty himself. But I think he quite rightly gets Quade Cooper for no clear release. You see, Quade helps bring the carrier to ground. No. Okay, oh, sorry. Sorry, I thought you said four. It's a bit of a test for Mike in Spanish there. Back to the audible. <laughs> Get working. Yeah, but you'll see here the low tackle from McWright and Cooper assists and he's a tackler by bringing him to ground. It's Valentini that releases, but Quaid doesn't. And that's who gets penalised there. A 
just trying to get one arm Number in for the rip, Jimmy. which he's already done successfully once today. I think he might have got his left arm caught in there, Quade Cooper. Not that he's in there much, but that's an opportunity there for him to get a piece of Rob Ballantini and really plug him in, leave him to go for the ball, and Quade can add ballast, really, to keep him in position. Buffelli flicks through another penalty, and it's a six-point game. It's a little bit inaccurate there, but I love the physical presence of Quade Cooper thus far in the game. It shows that he's engaged. So, oh, I always think it's a really nice signifier of, of where he's at in a game. Yes, he'll steer it around the park. Yes, he's a skillful player, but being present and engaged physically in defence is a great sign. White again working that right-hand side with his restarts, and it's well-timed there by Jordi Pattaya. Philip and McWright combine. Stop that forward thrust of Argentina. Rushed into the clearing kick, and it is a good strike. Won't find touch though, and here's Cooper. Cooper coming cross field. Wants it to sit down, and it does. Oh, it's a beautifully weighted touch finder from Cooper. You can see what he was thinking. He was getting as close to that 50 metre mark as he could and trying to put the ball as close to that 22 to try and get the line out throw. He was only a couple of metres off. Here's the hit from Geordie Pattaya. Just paused long enough to allow the player to land on his feet. Another technical it's infringement it's at line-out time. Picking up the Wallaby line for stepping across even before the ball's thrown in. Need to manage their relationship with the referee here. Too many penalties. Letting Argentina out of their zone. They thump it high and down towards... Wright. Coming back well, Tom Wright, who was a standout for the Wallabies. Uh, turnover not successful. Against England. White, Swain, at the back for Cooper and some room here for Quaid. Looking off for the link up here with McWright who overruns it on the inside. Cooper's still moving. Quaid Cooper has taken it 80 here. White looking to strike. Good rush, Steve, from Carreras on Paisami. Stopped him on the spot. Now for Ricky Tau. Karoin Betet leaves it at the tail for White. Phillip tipping on for Slipper. Met strongly by Alamano. White, back short side. Valentini, oh, he tried for the tip ball wide for Icky Tower, but it's travelled forward and gone to touch. Great passage of play from the Wallabies. Not just that big run from Cooper, but just the running lines, the variation. Throwing the pass out the back, but then also giving the front ball to those big forward runners. I think it was Darcy Swain who made this pass to Quade Cooper. There it is. Yeah, great to see Quade attacking on. Have a look at the support line of Fraser McRide. He's busting through the inside, and then Quade stays alive on his feet, and the Wallabies look dangerous every time they have the ball, just not getting the catch pass there, but encouraging signs in attack all over the park for the Wallabies. And you talked about his engagement physically on defence, and it converts, obviously, the same with the ball in hand. First try scorer for the afternoon. Comes away with it. And look up and be very thankful for this penalty. Goes against Australia. You look like you walked round. Well, when the ball's out, we could just let him play. There's an option there. And James Slipper said, as long as that happens on our ball, and Mike Adamson, I don't know, he didn't understand what James Slipper was so again, saying. So David Kidwell okay. next to Michael Checker, and to Michael Checker's right was Felipe Contempomi, attack coach and Argentinian rugby legend, yeah. and there he thinks that Alan Alotoa doesn't have dominance, just steps around on the tight head side. 
taken there by Gonzalez Samso. Midfield now, and Goroin Bete comes up and put that sort of in quick smart. In behind they come, there's a little room there, and it's soccer to head out on the fly. Off the boot of Santiago Cordero. Nice variation from the Pumas as well. It's not all just about bash and crash. They had a bit of a go, moving the ball around. Coroin Bete put paid to that. All the way with the grab. McBride over for stop White. Here, here. Okay. lean on his boot. He plugs it midfield inside the Argentina 22. They're coming back via the boot. Swain checking the runner in pursuit off the line and no penalty there for Australia. Now they release. win one right on halfway. No release. No release. A bit of pressure reliever there for the Wallabies. The whistling in the crowd is from their thoughts of Darcy Swain. Just runs one of the Argentinian chasers off the ball. Don't mind the option down the middle of the park. Make Argentina decide if they want to counter attack or not. Here's Swain on left of screen just, just shifting across. And then Cabelli makes the tackle and has both hands on the ground and no clear release. Yeah. Challenging and gives the Wallabies another 22 entry, which they've been quite clinical at converting. Stay. Los Pumas counted the last rolling wall of Australia well. Fangaa with the throw. Ten out. Philip McWright. Fangaa swings around the corner and feeds it to Valentini. Five away. Hole away. No manos, no manos. White holding it up here for Swain. He's wrapped up heavy. Gets caught a touch high, but does a great job to feed it back. Philip. White. Alatoa reaching and setting it back towards the uprights. White. Paisami isolated. And over the top go Argentina. They lose their feet late. Cooper putting feet on Cooper. Popping there for Slipper. It was on. Off the heads, the call, and Argentina survive. It was almost too good from Quay Cooper. Downfield, Argentina come. That takes a wicked bounce. Tidied up eventually by Tom Wright. Big net gain here for Argentina. They were under all sorts of pressure. White for Swain. Now need to regroup here, the Wallabies. White. Right, in ball for Coin Bete. They get the clean out wrong there, though, Australia. And the extra roll won't help either. Penalty Argentina. Very, very willing at the moment, and both teams quick to identify opportunities with ball on ground. Any inaccuracy in the clean out makes that ball vulnerable. Unlucky bounce there. It was a shame that Coin Bete had to get in and help with the clean out on Tom Wright as we see Paisami running into that big wall no, no, in front, no. here's the step well, we've seen him do the jump no. step Quade Cooper, no. it still had the effect of surprising Montoya as did the pass to James Slipper he nearly hurt his knee I reckon <laughs> Montoya but they resisted well on their own line it must be said Argentina real starch to their defence on the line I understand, yeah. I think it's been okay last couple. Yeah, it's been. Hold Philip gets up, gets a hand on. Great steal from Philip. Wonderful read. I saw that time and time again through the early part of July. And that Philip at line out time. Winning it against the throw. Now, what? Use it. Is it in behind? Wanted to sit, does so. Lost four there by Argentina. It'll just be the scrum. Accidental offside will be the call there. Didn't have any time. There it is. 
Wallaby scrum. Forward scrum. Yes, and some nice subtle. You can see there, William Montoya have some very subtle shadowing of Marika Kuroi and Betsy. It would have been interesting to see Marika get a bit of a run on and a chance to climb into the air. He did well, Marika, there to thread the needle and his body get through and make it a true contest in the air for that pressure. Important period, the two, to two really identified periods by international coaches at the moment of sort of the seven, eight minutes before half time and then the last 15 minutes of a match. And, Entering that period now, the Wallabies with possession and territory. Trying to bridge the gap on this Argentinian lead. Set! Say hi, alto! Okay, use it. All the way now with Valentini looking to contain possession. We've got Scrappy at the back on that occasion. That's not a bad result, a reset. And if Australia can at least keep this straight, maybe get the right side up a little bit, but at least straight, they've got a lot of space to work with. Only five metres in from this touch. And with the threats they've got in the back line and what they were able to do before with limited space, it'll be interesting to see what they can do with the likes of Pattaya and Tom Wright. There's an interesting tactical option there from Nick White. He fainted that he was going 8-9 with Rob Ballantini to try and get the... The Pumas team's back row was to take their weight off the scrum and actually wheeled away from what the Wallabies wanted and went to exactly right, a better platform for the backs. Crouch. Could be very interesting for this Wallaby attack that can flatten up and sit down Carreras Set. at 10. Stay high. Wait, wait. Valentini goes to White. White on the angle, going to Cooper, across for Kroin Bete. Great hands down, low from right to White. And it's a rare mistake from the Wallaby scrum half. He will be filthy with himself. Well, the first line of defence there for the Pumas was that scrum. They managed to get a lot of pressure up on their left-hand side, which just made it slightly more difficult for Nick White to get a clean getaway from the Valentini pass. And good defence from the Pumas out wider as well. They're debriefing now, quite Cooper and Nick White, but they kept their integrity, but also the will meant that Cabelli could come around and provide an extra number, and that's why the wider channels of right the Argentinian defence, yeah. they get numbers into channels. De La Fuente gets all the way across and can push, allowing a bit more line speed and even Buffelli yeah, to come up and close. just seemed like there was a little bit of a, a gap between the Ikitao run and Marika out the back. He was neither punching through a hole, Marika, nor deep enough to be able to get that distribution role going. And the Argentinians, as I said, good defence, but they were able to read that play pretty well. well the whole premise of that play is that Hunter Pice Army needs to sit down or check the momentum of both Carreras, the, the back row in cover, and Cabelli coming around as a nine. When they were able to read that and push through, they had numbers and confidence, Argentina. Good signs and, and great work, of course, from defence coach David Kidwell. Crouch! Bind! Set! forwards and the crowd tell the story of that little scrum battle it's a big win as we close here on half time to the Pumas it's a little missed opportunity there for the Wallabies Think back 90 seconds they've got a scrum on the attack on the left hand side and now it's the back of good defense and a well earned scrum penalty I think both loose heads uh, are coming up and around and just back to the next, to outside angle next. and back and around. And whichever side just Mike stay. Adamson's on, he's seen that from the loose head. That side he, he picked off Alan Alatoa for collapsing. He might come around and have a look at James Slipper's work next time. Montoya. Found Alamano. Now comes round the corner. Carreras. 
going early for De La Fuente. Kramer. Kubeli. Montoya. Philip goes low. Gets an assist from Slipper Kubeli. It's clipped hard by Iki Tau. Penalty advantage here for Argentina again. Australia offside. Carreras caught high. Holloway. He'll be in the side to the TMO now. They've got a certain three points coming. Can they make it seven here? Argentina through Orlando. No. And back we go. Yeah, I don't think... I think they're going to have a look at this Holloway tackle, but I don't think there's anything in it. Julian? I think it just slipped up, and he let Julian? go pretty quickly, Jed Holloway. He had a significant height advantage over Here. the player he was tackling. Um, offside guard and a high tackle. Uh, and I know I'm talking about 10, the discipline here needs to improve. Okay. I will do, I will do. Credit where it's due. Well officiated there. They obviously went in the background and had a look at the tackle, decided nothing three, in it. That's three penalties. At the same time, Mike Get Adamson, and it's on cut at us. That was three penalties in that last phase. As you hear, Mike Adamson concerned, or he's going to have to be Ten. a bit more Use the arm. severe if Use they the keep infringing the, the Australians. Loaded to the front by Montoya. Swain's in there looking to shut it down. Oh, that's excellent. The big fella's back in business. Swain shuts down another opposing rolling ball, and Australia will have the scrum. Darcy Swain is an absolute menace. He's done it for the Brumbies. We've seen him do it consistently in Wallaby Gold over the last couple of years. And it's such a talent. It's such an important part of the game to be able to stop rolling more attacking shapes, especially right on your own line. They're huge plays, and he can do it so consistently. Find his way through weak shoulders and weak spots in malls. Harass Mertz, the opposition, at an important time to resist. Can we just get your blood cleaned off the face? Well, that's a good idea. Let's clean the faces. That's that's a, that is a massive play, Morgan, obviously. The difference going in, if they can escape from their territory now, Australia, in the next two minutes, not concede any more points. Going in at 16-10, I think they'll take that with the passion yeah, I just want to get the blood. that the Argentinians have played the with and the crowd behind the them. 21-10 or 23-10 is a different proposition. It gives the Pumas the chance to reload on the passion, get the blood boiling again in the break and come out steaming. Yeah, they've had to go to the well a few times, the Wallabies, to come back when behind over in Argentina. And you think, yeah, 22, 23, 24 points, that's a long way back. When you know, 21, 10, 23, 10. But they'll go into the sheds if they can resist here. With confidence they have points in and they've looked potent when they have the ball. Surely there won't be too many points on the whiteboard for Dave Rennie. Surely it's just a big one in capital saying discipline. Frank Gar ahead of this scrum with his opposing front rowers. Free kick Australia. You hear referees talk about break foot a lot at scrum and it's designed it's, it's around where the hooker puts his feet it's designed to stop pre-engaging and pre-pushing and it's a real cue a technical cue for referees and you'll see a significant amount of free kicks in the international game at the moment with regard to that time off time off captain come here this is taking too long it must be quicker it must be faster time on Holloway giving pressure, has he stolen it here, Jed? 
He got a big hand on it. On the penalty go against Holloway. Jumping across on the, on the lifter. He looks like he got a hand clean on the ball initially. He landed on the lifter. He landed on the lifter. Well, he, but he landed on I the, think penalty on Argentina the might be the right result, but I would have thought for holding on the ground rather than any offence in the line-out. Really good Close effort goal. from Holloway and his lifters yeah, to get up and compete for that ball. And he got help from his assistant referee there. And I think Jed Holloway will say he had the ball. I think that would be his justification. It's about as clean as it gets, doesn't it? Hands out in front. I understand. I understand. I just want to see Tough it. Tough one for the debutant right on half time. Here comes Buffelli looking to make it. Nine point difference as they head off to the sheds in Mendoza. It's Argentina leading by seven early on. Penalty goals. Australia's sole try coming from Jordi Pataya. That's how it's played out through the first 40s, but fairly has the final say. 40 back. 15 in from touch. And has been hitting them. Sweetly from the tee this afternoon, Buffelli. And he repeats the dose right on the break. It is Argentina who'll turn with the lead. They are clear by nine against the Wallabies. One try piece, the difference, that boot of Buffelli. Yes, and I think what's led to Buffelli being able to take those opportunities has been the discipline that we've talked about. And it's not just discipline, not giving away penalties, it's not giving away the ball. It's not giving Argentina an easy exit from their 22 or an easy attacking opportunity down into the Australian 22. So that's what Dave Rennie will have been talking about at halftime. It goes back also to the question we've just heard the, the, the team talk about with first phase getting better front foot ball on that first phase. Putting Argentina under more pressure, bringing those big runners into play. Imagine the sight if we can see big Jed Holloway roaming up wide later on in this half. He's been good in his debut game with Australia. Has Jed Holloway as we get restarted. The Wallabies trailing by nine. Looking to keep their hot streak going in the rugby championship. Four on the spin last year. And on the flip side, Argentina chasing their first rugby championship win in their last nine starts. Goes to Swain, who pops it nicely for White. Passami looking to free his arms. Good carry from Hunter. Slipper within, ball to right. Read well by Argentina, and they'll win the turnover. White comes around the corner and soccers it back. Does so illegally, and Matera throws his arms up. Adamson marches the wall of his ten. Turnover was good, then nine came in the side and then back check. Well, if the message was discipline at half time, it hasn't quite been heard. If we're going to look at that play again, it's a, a pet play from the Wallabies. Looking to bounce back and the fake bounce back from the 11 play. Back inside, 
The adjustment of Noel Tete Shaparo there, the loose head prop from Argentina, saves it. There was space, and then the turnover is clean, and the Wallabies, Nick White coming in the side, adding insult to injury. But Tete Shaparo, the loose head prop, saving his team there. This one flipped down, Fangia wins it back for Australia, and then gets some good meters on the other side as well. Great job from Flau Fangia. Ray Cooper hooks that one across the field into the arms of Juan Cruz Mulia. The staff who touches us after and he's such a dangerous runner. Australia rushing up, lost here by Argentina, and it's on across to the right here as White goes to the boot. Kataya giving chase. Kataya cutting down the angle. Kuro embeds it, runs it a touch, and then it cannons into his. Okay. Leads down to Cooper. In fact, let's play on. Right. Does Malia first up? Right. Now, dumbing the switch and feeding it to Pattaya. Pattaya with not a whole lot of room to move. Right. Right sends it in field. Picked up by Holloway. One out, but isolated. Penalty Argentina. No. It's been willing from the get go. Fangana has been in the thick of it. Why the no Andrew Mertens? Be interesting to see it again. I just didn't think that was a penalty. What a pickup from Jed Holloway. Surely that wasn't legal. James, 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 can we talk? Hey, why? There's a bit. There's a bit to unpack. Okay, two things. I've already had to march him 10. If he keeps going on, we're going to have to penalise him more. Yeah. Okay? Secondly, your number two yeah. is always involved. Yeah. Can you have a word of him? Yeah. If I see him involved again, again, I'm going to have to penalise him. Right. I'll chat to them. Okay, I've spoken to them okay. about two of their players. Your players must keep their discipline as well. Okay. Okay. Can I say to them? Of course. <laughs> Just on, Cinco. Well, it was nearly a brilliant try to the Wallabies. The tire down the right flank. What's the running line of Tom Wright in support? He almost shepherds Jordan Patai protecting him and then keeps it alive going into touch and the pick up off his boot laces by Jed Holloway. And Mertz, I know what you're saying. No lifting motion here from Montoya flopping on top of the ball. And well, he's not keeping his shift. weight on his feet either. It's, that's a travesty. Okay. One half of the back. Good timing. Promising signs there, though, from the Wallabies down that right-hand side. Argentina now looking to march it with their rolling maulers. Holloway gets spat out the side, still with Argentina. Now the penalty goes the other way. Change lane. Hey, Mertz, are we at the full set of every law being enforced yet? Well, we're into traffic infringements now too with a lane change, so that's good to see. Nice piece of play just before that I didn't want to pollute as we look at what a lovely photo there in the corner there. Brand new episodes of Rugby Heaven. Sorry. So let's just get this right. Ros um, Kelly's been gone Red for like Red eight Red weeks. Red and the second she's back, um, no, full primer. Red. What do you mean she's back? Aren't I the host? Oh, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> What do you she mean can run back? shotgun for you. Oh. Looking forward to having Ros back in the chair. We've got Angus Bell joining us this week on Rugby Heaven as well. The injured Wallaby prop. McBride comes short side, not much room to move for Holloway. He cleverly tucks it under his enormous wing and goes infield. Valentini stepping onto it, making meters on the other side as well. Paisami holding up here for Iki Tau. Really promising this for Australia. Cooper with a stutter step at the line. White wanting it quickly. White gets it now, goes himself short. Back it comes. Valentini's there with Swain. De La Fuente trying to disrupt 
Alatoa, now Matera off his feet. Penalty advantage Australia. On they come, the Wallabies, can they get it down? It's held up over the line, still there for White. Still there for Australia. White, over to Paisami, Cooper, Cooper, fending. Oh no, Cooper's gone down, grabbing that calf again. That same calf that kept him out of the England series and he's popped it again. Oh no. And went yeah. offside on the goal line as well. Mike yeah, Kier I got that goes. as well. Oh, can you believe it? Well, it might even not be calf. It might be structural ankle. We'll just take about time here. Oh, and it was... Number eight at the ruck. And offside as well. Both? Yes. He's in pain. Uh, we've got two paddles just over here. It's not something you like seeing. We just saw the slip on that left foot when he went to accelerate again after the stutter yeah, step. Just to the left of the post. As you say, Morgan, fight. it looked you got two back. Yeah, they're both like it may be structural. He was so holding right. down his right. leg right. a lot right. further. Let's hope. Same right. Whatever it is, it's not going to be a long okay. time. Reese Hodge warming up. I'll give, I'll, I'll give him a time. Yeah. The Wallabies at the 6 2 bench are carrying yeah, no Jake problem. Gordon as a specialist half back, and Reese Hodge yeah. is the sole yeah. back. And, Goes into that squeeze ball, he plants on and gets the ball. For me, for me. How many more yeah. I understand, I understand what, I understand what you're saying. Can this Wallaby okay, squad cop? Yeah. But you need to cut the chat it's like down. It's a slip, yeah. wasn't it, Mertz? Okay. You're right. And and I, I just, I'll tell I'll you what, you hope it's not Achilles. Okay. Just how some of them are done. They roll up the calf. Uh, Aki. Okay. Some great play right from that very first surge as the stretcher comes out for Quade Cooper but the Achilles first surge from Rob Valentini some really good mm -hmm. play and Australia yeah. just desperate to get reward for their effort and their creating of opportunities honestly though Samu Karevi gone for the season Angus Bell back here in Australia Ned Hannigan injured Quade Cooper down now. There's more. There's another four or Andrew five. Andrew Kellaway. Andrew Kellaway. Yeah, Harry, Harry Johnson Holmes didn't make it out of the pre pre squad camp. Hookers everywhere. Dave Parecki back in Australia with concussion issues. Okay. He's hoping. That ain't too bad. So Quade Cooper assisted from the field by the medicos and. Assistant strength and conditioning coach Brendan Wheel and his Wallabies Beanie and Dr. Sharon Flaha, if we can get the best care. You can only hope it isn't that the fear of a, a ruptured Achilles, which those actions sometimes look like. Does Hodge go straight to 10? Van Gaar moving at the line out Holloway with a take. Advantage. Penalty advantage for Australia. McWright! There it is. Right Fraser McWright steps in for Michael Hooper and steps up for Australia. Marius, for me, his knees never They're thrust the into the like all-important number it's seven over. jerseys. A well-structured mall and Argentina had infringed by challenging yeah. early and Holloway controlled it and slipped to McWright. An important score for the Wallabies. Yes, good work from Australia. Yeah. And the dynamism was what helped here. They didn't want to get into that arm wrestle. Questions from the Argentinians as to whether McWright was down. He was never held. Just want to that real speed. Mario, so Still got to get up. Looks like his momentum dragged. Back to your feet and go across rather than try to crawl. It's probably somewhere in between there. Side. We're just checking. Just checking. It's not made a lunge. I just want to make sure that McWright hasn't had a second dip at it here. Walks. No. I think it's almost Holloway dragging him across. It's not him. It's what do they think of Holloway's influence, maybe? If they, they're only looking down at that body, they'll let this go on. There's no crawl motion. Paris, for me, he's been dragged across. He's not propelled himself forward. Seeing the same thing? 
Well, it helps that it was momentum. He never really stopped and was held in a tackle. One motion. Yeah, the true issue is yeah, my, the dragger. The tackle. You can continue Accidental offside. Right so there's no, there's no tackle, and he's been dragged across, so that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. Tighten back on. Oh, all right, we're going to get some dragging coming up now in, in rugby next couple of years, along with putting your head down and jumping into a tackle. No, I tell you what, isn't isn't Jed Holloway made for Test rugby? Reese Hodge on for the injured Quay Cooper. Hodge bangs through the conversion. 1917, it's Australia first on the board in the second term. Great hit from Reese Hodge, and hasn't he seen a turnaround in his fortunes in the last three or four weeks? Carreras. Down at Kroen Bete. Shrugs off that tackle of Cordero. Holloway. After lending a big hand in that try. Okay, use Moment it. to go for McRae. Takes it. Ten from his line. And it's now White who sneaks the exiting kick away. And that is a good thump. It's some room for Argentina. McRae's on hand to shut them down. Up comes Fane Gutter. Australia lifting their intensity. Shepping Argentina. Cross field are now making the tackle. Hodge in there, Cabelli back short side, Malia, Cordero, McWright going a touch high, sliding down the body as the home crowd look to make an impression on the refereeing crew, not getting the call on that occasion. Cabelli, straight rushing up through Pattaya, Paisami does not miss front on. In balls, a good one here, and Kramer gets through. Marcus Crane with runners, left and right, but they leave it behind. Australia will want this quick, they won't want the scrum. No manos, Reese, release, no manos. Hold you. White, peels out and punches it long, wide. Oh, what a kick from Nick White. Yeah, that's a huge clearance from Nick White, but opportunity lost for the Argentinians. I don't think Caradas was expecting that pass as early from Kramer. It's a great break from Kramer with the fend, but not a sympathetic pass it's either. And I think Caradas, he probably should have held it. But not sympathetic. But well, he sort of hurled it a little bit. It looked better in slow motion. <laughs> it's hit the eye on the visa. Montoya goes to the front. Clever little play this from Argentina, Montoya. Rolling over the top of White, Cabelli. Both teams lifting the pace here. Cabelli has to dive on that one at the base of the ruck and now it's tidied up as Swain gets in. This should be a mall call here. Swain can lay all over it. Australia ball. No. Mall for him first. Mall was for him first. Oh, yeah, but before. Nine picked the ball up, then a mall was for him. Was that ball out, Justin? Nice little play down the five metre line from Argentina to get in behind the Wallabies. And they did muscle up the Wallabies forward pack, and that hit it to Montoya. Wins the mismatch against Nick White, but then the Wallaby forwards realign well. Great knowledge of the rules from Darcy Swain with Kibeli up and off the ground to hold him long enough to form a all and then be able to collapse it and win the turnover. There you go, boys. You're getting a bit of love now. We're back. Oh, we've got to work, we've got to work twice this week, Nerds. Three times. I've got to make sure I get those two, three uh, phone books back to stand, that I'm standing on there alongside you, Big Sean. <laughs> and that will give the treatment to the All Blacks v Springboks test and recap this one as well. Between two posts Monday, Roby Heaven, Thursday, Clubland. Through the week with Andrew Swain in the chair. Clubland will be at uh, the Catchpole Medal, which is awarded in Sydney this Wednesday, the 10th of August. I think Tim Horan might actually turn up if he's, he's back from holidays. Still in Croatia. I've got, a, I've got a photo sent to me from Rome. Where, where in the world is Tim Horan? Do we not get the memo on holidays, I guess? A couple of changes there. Al Alatour has come off as we see Big Tanyella come on in this tight head side of the scrum. 
So Australia looking to ride this energy shift here after that try for McWright. It's White coming short side, running it in behind for Pattaya. Pattaya putting some pressure on Argentina back to touch. And they'll find just short of halfway. So Australia will resume this time round with a line out. Matt Phillip, we saw also coming off. He's had a big shift as well. Carried the ball well at times, put pressure on on the line out, primary role. Nick Frost joining Darcy Swain. Good pressure this time round from Los Pumas. Matera over to Kramer. Australia fly up. McWright going low on Matoja. And Frost gets a shoulder on in defence as well. Groin better. Excellent under the high one and gets it away for Tupo. who wanted a pass, but Adamson was in the way. And now Argentina pile through. Wright wanting it short side. Tom Wright has been excellent this afternoon as well. Icky Tau away for Valentini. Bobby V down the left hand side, drop 40 away. White. All the way. Lovely ball for McWright. Back for Frost, it is in fact. Swain helps tidy up. Hodge. Happy to settle it short of the 22. White. Up for Swain. Out the back. Tom Wright floating for Tupo. White, flat. McWright so flat, he popped, but it was intercepted. There was potential there, Karoin Bete in off his wing, space for Malia, Swain in cover. And he sends Argentina to touch, they'll play on though here. So he got the kick away in time. Australia rifle one back down. Into the Argentina 22. Here comes Malia. Sending it long, it looks to go a touch forward. Matera trying to line up runners across to the left. And in goes Gonzalez Samso, but that ball back on halfway looks a long way forward, real time. What skill, what a try. They'll absolutely have some time to look at a couple of those passes. But just when the Wallabies were looking fantastic with ball in hand, a turnover, some incredible skill over that far side. Here's one of the runs from McWright. The pass that went up got intercepted by Kramer, I think it was. The Argentinians surged down that right-hand side with some beautiful skill. The kick came back, and away they launched on the left side. Well, here's the new Argentina. They would have kicked that last year, the last three years. And they flood that left channel. He's got numbers everywhere, Matera. Is this one a little bit forward? But he keeps running, probably makes it OK. A wonderful piece of counter-attacking rugby by Argentina. I think both those passes were borderline, but have been adjudged, I think, correctly to have come backwards out of the hands. What great play from Pablo Matera, though, holding onto the ball long enough to commit. I think it was Nick White, the final defender. And he's finally given that pass across to Gonzalez. The timing of it, superb. Great try for Argentina. That was an astonishing piece of rugby by the Pumas. Malia launched it all from his own zone. He had his whole team in front of him. He chewed the metres, beat Falao Fangaa. And then his teammates responded around him. Well, this afternoon, when the play has been good, it has been very, very good. Thank goodness there are, well, thank goodness for Australia, there are 24 minutes left, 23 now. But for us as well, some fantastic running and passing rugby. The way he's been hitting them today, it suggests this one is going over the black dot. For Philly. He does. Enough to make it 26 17. Here it is, the audacity almost to launch from his own zone and makes the perfect choice, Malia. Matera sums it up with so many options. 
holds wide up enough. And how good has the back row been in the hard parts of the game, the combat in the middle of the park? Tyre can't hang on. Got round the back there, but it's been lost forward. Argentina to pack it down. They'll feed the scrum. Yeah, really unlucky for Jordan Pataira. I don't think he believed that ball was going to clear the Argentinians, so wasn't expecting it. Was in good position, but got caught by surprise, as we see this Argentinian rugby hero, Altin Crevi, on the field. If we've got a raging bull in the form of Julian Montoya, who started the game at hooker, here's another one. There's no respite. So it was 19-10 in favour of Argentina at the break. Crouch! Both sides adding converted tries Bind! to those half-time tallies. Set! And Australia have 22 minutes to play. Blue elbow to ground, blue elbow to ground. To keep their hot streak running in the rugby championship, this will help work them back into the match. Yeah, from the far side from referee Mike Adamson, he got a call from the assistant referee. It's a nice situation for Pete Samu, just over 20 minutes. It's a, the right kind of context of game for him where it's starting to open up a bit. It's Wallabies on the front look, foot looking dangerous for someone with his footwork and athleticism can make a real difference. An opportunity for Reese Hodge also to steer Australia home. Venga to Frost. It's a considerable target. But he pulls it down and looks to start ripping his men up the park. Penalty advantage here for Australia. White going over to Paisami. In behind for Iki Tau. It'll beat him. Dead in goal. We're coming back for the penalty. Well, it was the change up from the first half. Same shape, same shape. Both midfields at the line with 10 and winger motioning at the back and it's the grubber in behind change up and it was just a little bit too long, Mertz. Yeah, we've seen that done to really good effect alongside Geordie Pattaya with the Reds, haven't we, on several occasions in the last couple of years. On the legs. A little bit too much on that occasion as we see the forlorn figure of Quade Cooper already in the moon boot. And go again. Frost once more. They just double it up. It's a carbon copy. And Falau set up at the tail. White lending a hand. Albeit a lightweight one. In comes bigger muscle through Pattaya. Patient Australia. Penalty advantage. Van Gaa. Surely no way through there. Adamson. Is he coming back for the penalty try? It's a penalty try. A rare sight in Test Rugby. Adamson. Throws his arm up for the Wallabies. Collapse. Wow. Collapse. I actually thought Argentina might have had a hand in there on the ball too, and White was worried, and he must give that yellow card also. It's a double hit for Argentina. And I think we give Jordan Pattaya the try there. It's only fair. <laughs> they, yeah, what they did really well, the Wallabies, was they got the Sorry, forward Mikey, momentum Amano, going is there, is there very not, quickly not and early. Number four, sorry, apologies, sorry. number four. Sorry, apologies, number four. Quattro. Been good with his numbers tonight, Mike Adamson, Quattro, Cinco. A few of those around Sydney at the moment <laughs> after the rain we've had. Thank you. <laughs> Try to the Wallabies. They got that forward momentum really early and it put the Argentinian pack under pressure. Having to resort to infringements to keep it, right. to it. keep the Australians at bay as Alamano wanders off for a break. Okay, 
Good time on. Yep. Two points separates Argentina and Australia. Wallabies with three tries to Argentina's two. Corinne Bete with the tape. Marika finds McWright. Penalty Australia on the exit. He's not rolled away, so you can't jackal. There you go, 18. there's the explanation. It's great to see that little combination off a kickoff. Rare that in those moments you give those passes in close quarters. But Marika with the confidence to find Fraser McWright, who's always on the lookout for opportunity, never stops. Like Michael Hooper, never stops being in motion. Vengar, who's throwing this afternoon, has been excellent. Australia calling for the offside penalty here, and they'll get it. They've got the one-man advantage as well. It's well done by Darcy Swain. It's the fake release at the top of the jump. It was the cue for Argentina to come forward. A chance for Hodge, who definitely has the range. To take the Wallabies to the lead if they decide to go for the points, which they do, James Slipper points. Just on the 10. In the event that James Slipper comes off, he'll take over captaincy of the Wallabies. Nick thought, White? Put a, yeah, would have thought Nick White. See, Alan Alatoa was captain at the Brumbies. He's seated his place to Taniel Tupo. Whoever's halfback, you got Jake Gordon sitting there ready to come on too. Obviously one of the leaders in the squad. Tell them that. Tell them that. The good thing about having a boot the size of Reese Hodges is that anywhere in that 50, 55 metre range, the Argentinians have to be careful. So they've got to approach the rucks and the breakdowns a little more carefully without being able to push the envelope. 40 back, Hodge. His second shot since coming on for Quay Cooper, and he has absolutely drilled it. And for the first time, Australia are in front. Yep. That was on its way towards Santiago, Chile, I think, Sean, which, as you said before, is closer yep. here than Buenos Aires. The bounce pass, favourite of yours as well, Morgan, in the midfield. We get a little bouncer every now and then. Surprised it didn't work. Normally there's a line break off it. But yeah, we just saw that highlight, that little fake from Swain and that... That's built three points, a crucial three points for the Wallabies. And now, of course, for both teams, the less amount of time they spend of the last 50 minutes in their own zone, the better. Wallabies learning the hard way, efficiently responding after scoring points is so important. And here's this new anomaly well, in world I, rugby, I should, You know, as a fan and as a broadcaster, I just don't understand it. I get why, but I don't understand that you've got a situation here where Australia are upper man, all the energy and momentum of the game is behind them, and then we stop for three minutes for the opposing team to get reset around a water break. They're already getting water. They're getting plenty of on water the way every time there's a try or penalty. They've got access to water. Come on. What it's taking away is the, the fatigue factor, which we want to see because that's where gaps appear. And, yeah, of course, we'll see it all again next week in the early hours of Sunday morning, live and exclusive on Stan Sport. These two teams will go at it. I think the idea, obviously, is that the, to keep the water carriers off the field throughout but the game. But they're still out there. There's been no change. No change. If it was 40 degrees, I get it. It ain't. Twilight rugby from Argentina. As Frost brings down the restart. White. Swain from a standing start. Penalty Australia. Well, that's two in a row that's been messy from the Argentinians in terms of the kickoff. Not being able to exert pressure on the Wallabies. An easy exit now. Reese Hodge could quite conceivably put this past the 10 metre line well into Argentinian territory. Well, we might find out who the captain will be for the Wallabies. James Hipp has grabbed at his hamstring there. Looks in a bit of discomfort. I think he'll try and soldier on. Not sure if it was a grab or a bit of early cramp. Yes, yes, we did. Oh. 
And Gaa, spot on. White. Again, Australia looking to work over Argentina here with that one-man advantage. Whoa, Hodge goes infield for Corinne Bete. I think the pass may have been forward. Marika just showing us how well he can finish when given <laughs> an opportunity. We're coming back for the penalty. No penalty. No, it was, it, pass. It, was a, it was a authoritative blow of the whistle, which made you think it was. It is forward back inside there. I thought he must have got someone for blocking or something. It's definitely where the hole is. So hard to be so hard, Mertz, you'll know better than I, to go have your, your body weight and motion going away from where that pass has got to go and be able to turn that right shoulder and rip it back so the pass goes backwards. Even more so these days, I'll admit. <laughs> Interesting, the use of Hunter Paisami this afternoon. Normally as an opposition team, you'd research and, and you'd watch him and you'd know that he's he's the punch in the midfield. But he hasn't been used like that at all, has he, Morgan? He's been used more in a distribution role, like the first try that got set up where he pushed Quade Cooper wide. He's been throwing passes out to Valentini, etc. Hasn't really, which is not a bad thing, but it's obviously taken Argentina a little bit by surprise. Yeah, I think that's often the false assumption around Hunter, especially in his early days playing. It was very much direct, abrasive, get over the game line. Big, he's obviously, you know, the king of the big hits. I think we've talked about if you if you followed our Super Rugby and Test coverage on Stan Sport and the Nine Network for the last couple of years, you've seen him continue to obviously work on his game and add layers, and we're seeing a more and more complete football. I couldn't agree with more with your thoughts there, Mertz, which is rare, of course. Set. Cut. Bazan Velez, star of the Puma Seven, set up for a number of years. He's alive. Why? That's lost though. Valentini, good pick up. Back for McWright, tidying up White. Back for Slipper. No real advantage here after that knock on. Right, no look away for Fane Gutter, who's had one of his best games in Wallabies colours in a long time this afternoon. He has been outstanding. Paisami dumbing and almost blowing through. White. Karoin Bete. Picks and goes again, Marika. Up to the 22, now isolated. Penalty advantage for the Wallabies though. White. So McWright trying to free it up. White. Flat for Jupo. Missiles his way over the top. And launches a second effort. Now Marika Coyne better. Australia's big time ball carriers double teaming here. White looking short side coming open. Hodge wasn't ready for it. Slipper. Penalty advantage here for the green and gold. White probing. Feeding it here for Frost. Away for Tsupo, who goes low and gets his team one away. White coming here for Hodge. Clever. Feeds it back. Ikitao. Back for Fangaa. Fangaa standing and driving towards the line. White can't get it. Frenetic football. From the Wallabies, they've got the penalty. He seems to have changed his approach, Mike Adamson. Right at the start of the game, I think those penalties would have gone for the defensive team. So, they have changed, and Australia is the beneficiary, but some fantastic play. What wonderful skills, support play, and finding one another, and keeping the momentum going forward on attack. Okay. Oh. The option they're going to take here is the interesting one, but the the option taking from Nick White at the frenetic pace was elite. The choices he was making in and around the ruck identified that pre-game as an opportunity for the Wallabies, and it was always going to be at the back end when fatigue set in. The Argentinian ability to hold on, yes, with infringements was almost as impressive, but that Wallaby team, the, the, the prominence of Mick Wright and Holloway and Tanya Tupo off the bench in and around the ruck at a frenetic pace, as you said, Mertz. Reese Hodge it was who pushed for the touch kick to go for a line out. I don't think he had any one complaining from the front row. It's been a torrid afternoon, as always. And remembering that Argentina are at 14 men, only the seven forwards. Australia. 
So they came away with a penalty try on the other side of their last rolling wall, close to the Argentinian line, did Australia. Jakey Gordon on the field for Nick White, who has turned in an outstanding shift himself. Trademark White performance for the Wallabies. Van Gaar now to Frost. They go to the front. And they start to edge forward. Van Gaar. Gordon in there now, having a look. Jake Gordon, he's explosive off the back. Van Gaar will go himself and jam it in for Australia. Wonderfully set up Maul from the Wallabies. Crunch time, 10 to go. They just took the lead for the first time and they've backed it up. Beautifully set up Maul. One by Frost in the air. And Fahinga makes the great choice. Well set up. They get momentum early. And once that momentum dissipates, they're waiting for the right time to split. Jake Gordon thinks he might have to take it. He's looking blind with Marika Corimbetti. And Falao Fahinga senses that momentum. Goes out of the mall there and just detaches. And he's too good. One-on-one -on -one against Cordero. Yeah, it's far from a run-of-the-mill driving mall try. He had some real... Dexterity he had to call on there just to plant that ball over the line. They'd done enough to bring all the Ford pack into that mall. So he was up against a couple of backs. Falau Fanga. Still a bit of work to do. And as I say, to plant that ball down, have the presence to get it down as soon he was as he was near the line. Quite something. And a timely try for Australia, Sean. So they capitalise. Myrtle on that one man advantage and it is Hodge stepping in eight from touch this crucial Hodge looking to draw her back it's working home it's working home and it's good for the Wallabies 34 26 now that eight point margin Absolutely crucial, greater than a converted try score. He did well, he had numbers around him, Puma numbers around him and found a way to get that ball down. But Hodge has been good since entering the fray. Having to step up at 10. And then more importantly than his efforts off the tee. Hard to remember, Flaufain Gaa having a better game than he has today. That one won't go 10, we'll have a scrum on halfway. Every line out, spot on, scrummaging good, work around the field, excellent, and he was firing from the outset, was full out. The theme in this Wallabies team, given opportunity under whatever circumstances, they've played well. He's been so good at super rugby level. He's been in and out of the Wallabies at times. He's a fine player, Falau Fanga. And a special moment also with the Wallabies as a few changes are being made. We'll see him in a moment. Matt Gibbon. It's like he's replaced James Slipper. There he is at Lucid Prob alongside Lachlan Lonigan. A wonderful moment for his family. A bit of sweet. He just lost his grandfather, Dave Pollock, who was instrumental in raising he and his brother, Alex. An emotional time for the family, but a proud moment. Matt Gibbon becomes a wallaby today. Good morning to his family and friends watching on on the north coast of New South Wales as well. What a year it's been for him. Keep it up. Keep that From part time with the Rebels to Aussie A and now your boys are Wallaby. Big shove here from Australia. They keep their shape and it goes the other way. I can't ever remember seeing that happen. Well, I've, I, I can't remember what stationary means in that case either. Okay. Well, look, what happens there in, in communicating it, he makes a rod for his own back there, Mike Adamson. He'll explain his way out of it, but look, truthfully, rightly or wrongly, there, that's Rob Allentini's responsibility and Jake Gordon's to communicate that. You hear stationary, you hear use it, you have to go. Whether it's right or wrong, you need to manage the referee. There was a moment where the ball is at, is at Rob Valentini's feet, and it's just a moment where the scrum is stationary and it re-engages. Unfortunately, Mike Adamson, by error, has probably backed himself into a corner by announcing that and has to follow through. Well, he backed himself into a corner, but he also got there right at the moment where the ball could have come out. He was right in there, in the way. 
just seems to defy logic, that, that ruling. Time here for Argentina. They've got their full stack of players back on the field, and they now have a penalty. Loose hand hinge. Huge. H huge change in momentum there. Wallabies had that dominant scrum a moment ago, didn't use it. Turnover, and then Argentina win a penalty. Close called. Just on behind the halfway. Okay. And this man, Emiliano Buffelli, has been striking the ball, as you said before, Sean, beautifully today. Say again. And this is just to get them within the that converted back, try. We'll it, so Currently at eight points, so. Take the three now and then go all out for the try with a storming finish, Argentina. Yeah, but the scrum is clearly stationary. I call use it, so we must play away. So you can hear referee Adamson talking to Jake Gordon there. It looks like Jakey Gordon has taken over as skipper, which would make sense given his experience with the Waratahs as one of their out and out leaders for a number of years. So this to potentially set up a losing bonus point for Argentina and then potentially give them a chance to snatch it from Australia late as they did against Scotland in their three test series. That one went down to the 83rd minute in the third test. And it was this man who was the star at the back end there, Buffelli. It's looking to come back. It won't. It hangs wide right. Jeez, he got all of that one. Sail dead in goal. Australia will restart with a 22 drop kick. And they'll restart with a sigh of relief and a 22. Rob Leota comes on for Fraser McWright, who under trying circumstances has been excellent within the responsibility that is held within a gold number seven jersey. Third test with Australia, grabbed a try as well. And that was a crucial put down that went to Fraser McWright, helped get Australia moving in the second half. As Bruni comes back. Azan Velez over for Matera. That one lost by Malia. Australia will have the scrum. Obviously scored that brilliant counter-attacking try, but one thing I've noticed about the Wallabies is they've been happy. Yes, that was a 22, but generally they've been happy to kick long and in. Almost knowing that a Michael Checker coach team will run a lot of ball back from just inside their own half and just backing their own defence and challenging Argentina to be able to execute their short passing game where it's under pressure. What's the problem? Yes, and as the game's worn on, and a little bit of fatigue factor as well. The accuracy of Argentina has dropped. Not quite looking frazzled, but perhaps not as clean as they were in the first half in some of those moments. I'm sure they'll be ruining the fact that they didn't put on more points when they had some dominance in the first half. The Pumas. If just waking up across Australia and wondering Set. what's played out. Well, the Wallabies lost Quade Cooper early in the first half. Early in the second half, rather, and Reese Hodge has come on and done wonderfully in Quade's absence. He's on the sideline with a moon boot on. Australia trailed by nine at the break and have dominated field position in this second turn with some real adventurous rugby. Liotta looking to finish with a bang. Valentini skips into the pass from Hodge. Kroimbete. Advantage. My advantage taken. And do you look to the posts? Is that the call? You certainly do. You certainly do. They've scored four tries to second Argentina's time. two, so there's decisions around attack and bonus points but three points take the minute and move on to next week let's go as you said sean <laughs> seven seconds <laughs> make a, 
I'll make a liar of you <laughs> every day of the week, these blokes. I'm sure they put it in the post. I will make a liar of you both. I was about no, to say not every day the of the week. So we can't risk another injury. <laughs> I was about to say how good he's been again, Reese Hodge, but now I'm even more excited for him that he's proved Morgan wrong. But Valentini has been huge. A lot of big carries. The other one I like that has maybe flown under the radar a little bit is Paisami. Yes. He's he's really kept Orlando and De La Fuente under wraps as well in the midfield. He's been a bit more subtle. Samu, oh, to Paisami. Oops. Yep, Andrew Mertens puts the moz on Hunter. So Argentina with the ball now. 40 seconds to play. Down by eight. Coming wide here. Scored a tremendous try down this left-hand side to reclaim the lead. In the second half before Australia picked it up and ran right. Still a chance here for the home team to grab a losing bonus point. Last play. Creevy. Bruni. Azan Velez. Working it over to Moroni. Hopping well off the deck. Azan Velez. Coming short to the huge frame of Bruni. We've got a penalty here for Australia. High on the clean out to the call. The locals don't agree. Make sure you tap it. And Australia can close it out here. <laughs> Maybe. Tom Wright talking about the bonus point. Got a fair bit of the field they've got to work up. It looks like they're going to give it a go, Australia. Good on them. This is a very good win here this afternoon, and there's been some absolutely fantastic play. So Australia chasing a bonus point of their own here. To finish three tries in front of Argentina. It'll be a huge collect in the first up rugby championship game. Noss Lonigan with the throw. Liotta down for Gordon. Here for Paisami. Dummies and almost gets past Kramer. Up from Gordon. Gordon going on the wrap around. It's Tupo in the end who tidies up. He's made a big impact. Hodge across the line to Corey Betted and Austin Lonigan. Lonigan just stays in the field of play. Gibbon. Gordon up for Hodge. Hodge delaying the pass for Tupo. Bounces off one, comes back and collects a couple of blue and white jerseys and now they win the penalty. It's Bruni. And on we go, Mertz. They keep going penalty to penalty. I mean, it's a football stadium. They're used to going to 90. wonder if we can get there. Neither team wants to stop. They've both got something to gain. Sixty points aggregate already. When it's been on, it's been well and truly on. At the Estadio Malvinas, Argentinas in Mendoza. Australia looking for the seal, can't get it. Is this the final play of the game? Argentina in possession. Bazan Velez getting it nice and quick. Shaping inside, going out now. Ducking under a couple here, Bazan Velez. Matera, who scored the first try of the afternoon. Feeding it away as Paisami comes up. 
and stops Lavanini. Lavanini not looking 100. And he's laid out. Now it is here with Pattaya, Jordi Pattaya, towing it ahead. And the chase is on from Nick Frost. Nick Frost, look at him move. Frost is there for Australia. He releases and goes again. Out the back for Pattaya. Going on quick for Hodge. Hodge needs to stay in the field to play dumped. 10 away. Now Argentina flood, losing their feet. Will it be Australia with a final say? Liotta. Liotta with a strong punching run. Paisami to no one. Ikitao tidies up. Argentina all over it. Gordon. Frost. Frost is there and after that big run upfield to even get the ball. Lays it back for Marika Corimbete. Leota away for Hodge. Hodge overrun by Pataya on the outside. Now Leota on the side angle clean out. Can't affect it. And it's Argentina's ball now. Los Pumas and Matera. Matera looking to kick now. Puts it through the hands. Australia looking for the turnover. Good shape on the ball from Australia. Can't get their hands on. Argentina reload. They get it round the line. Still there. Will someone dive on it for Australia? Here it is. Corey Bender. Gordon. Gordon. Paisami. Dummies. Paisami. Away here. Fanny Kitao. Oh, what a wild finish for the Wallabies. There's the bonus point. It is a huge win on the road for Australia. Well, players are out on their feet. We just about are here as well. What an extraordinary last five minutes of play since the buzzer. The team of officials getting it on the act two. Here's the last part. They're probably checking just that pass. The big dummy from Paisami and off to his mate, Lan Ikitao. What a sequence of play. Two teams punch drunk, keeping on <laughs> swinging. What are we looking for here, Mertz? I don't know. This pass here from Jake Gordon. I think it's all right. It looks bad because he got hit in a tackle just after he let it go, which makes it look like it's gone further forward. Well, if the first one to Argentina went on the board earlier in the game... Just question, did it come out of the back of his hands? He had some forward momentum, Jake Gordon. The crowd's not going to help Australia's cause here. We're just waiting on the pictures from our local broadcaster. We've heard the toot on the whistle. The try stands. There it is, Australia. And Hodge... Pumps through the conversion. Cheers, brother. Extraordinary finish to a crazy old game in Argentina. Australia trailed by nine at the break and have run in 31 points in the second half to come away as 15-point winners in Mendoza.